Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we have a letter from St. Faustina to Father Sopochko from September of 1936. Krakow, 20th of September, 1936. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Most Reverend and Dear Father, Please graciously accept my sincere and most cordial wishes on the occasion of your name day. On this special day, your feast day, Father, I would like to wish you good health and God's abundant graces. And as an apostle of the divine mercy, may you lead to God's throne a great multitude of souls who will incessantly glorify the Lord's mercy. At the hour of your death, Father, you will obtain what Jesus promised me, namely that Jesus will protect at the hour of their death as his own glory those who proclaim this great and incomprehensible mercy of God. And as a spiritual bouquet, I will offer for you, Father, from September 29th until October 30th, all the holy masses and holy communions, all prayers and good deeds, penances and mortifications, all interior inspirations and enlightenments, all acts of pure love of God. Ever since the moment of our separation, I have remembered you every day, Father, if only for a brief moment, in my prayers before the Lord. No, to me, known to me, are all your undertakings and intentions in this work of the divine mercy. I see how many souls already glorify this incomprehensible mis- mercy of God. My heart flutters with joy when I see the good that is effected in human souls through this work. On the 14th of September, we were visited by the arch-shepherd of Vilnius. I talked with him briefly about this matter. He showed me much kindness and goodwill. I continued to go to confession to Father Andras. And now, as regards my interior life, everything is the same. I feel a great desire and longing for God. I know that soon love will cut through the thread of my earthly life, because I hear the call of my spouse. But no, death will not delay this work, for then I will have the possibility of full action. Oh, how happy I am that pure love of neighbor in God does not end with death, but is ennobled. Father, whenever I glance at this booklet, a new flame of love towards God bursts forth from my soul. Today, the 26th of September, I am finishing this letter. I am in bed. I am seriously ill with a lung disease. The doctor ordered that I be isolated from the congregation. I do not know the hour of my death, but if everything continues as it does now, I shall soon arrive at the palace of my beloved spouse. I solemnly promise you, Father, that I shall support you in a purely spiritual way through prayer in all the works you undertake for the glory of God and the good of souls. I was thinking about the prophetic words which you wrote to me in your last letter, that such a congregation would first have to be established without me, and surely this is how it will be. May his holy will be done in everything. Father, I am so wondrously abandoned to the will of God that amidst everything, including even death itself, I remain calm and free, like a queen. This is a great grace of God, but also the fruit of your work, Father, of directing me over the last three years. Alone I would have perished on these steep mountains, but the merciful God gave me such help in two priests, that is, in you, Father, and secondly, in Father Andras. Although my death may take place fifty years from now, or in a few days, or even less than that, I have a great request, namely, that you send me in writing your blessing, Father, and absolution for the hour of my death. This would be a great grace for me. I kiss your hand, dear Father, and I renew my request. I remain full of trust in the infinite and incomprehensible and inexhaustible mercy of God. It seems to me that shortly, 
Father Korczyk will pay us a visit, so I shall arrange some of the things through him. Sister M. Faustina. Faustina writes to Father Sapochko on the occasion of his feast day, which falls on September 29th, the feast of the Archangels. His name is Michael. She promises to offer a month's worth of masses, holy communions, prayers, penances, mortifications, etc., for his intentions. Quite a spiritual gift, knowing how many sacrifices St. Faustina makes. She prays for him every day. She sees how many souls are benefiting from the work of the Divine Mercy. She mentions speaking about the work to the Archbishop of Vilnius, who had visited. She briefly rec recounts the state of her soul. She is sure that her work will not end with her death, but only begin then. St. Faustina apparently had been diagnosed with tuberculosis of the lungs, so she is separated from the other sisters to prevent infection. She wants to go to the palace of the king, Jesus, her spouse, and she promises to continually intercede for the work from heaven. In her previous letter, she might have still clung to the hope of founding the new congregation herself, but now she realizes that it won't be possible. Father Sapochka will have to take up this work, so she surrenders to God's will in everything. She is very grateful to Father Sapochko, who has helped her to grow in accepting God's will during the three years that he has been her spiritual director. And she asks for a written absolution at the hour of her death from him. He did send her that blessing. St. Faustina knows where she wants to go when she dies, and she doesn't want to take any chances.